Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you on the road to WrestleMania. Before I know it, it's going to be Wednesday and I'm going to be having my uh, my truck's tires hit the freeway. I'm going to be driving down to San Jose to pick up my buddies and we're going to be having one hell of a time at WrestleMania 31 doing all the things uh, that are highlighted by WrestleMania 31 weekend from Access to WrestleCon, the Hall of Fame, uh, the Raw after WrestleMania and WrestleMania 31 itself. Now, the only thing we have to do uh, between now and Wednesday when I leave on my trip is tomorrow night, Monday Night Raw, coming to you live from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. This, of course, is going to be shot at live 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Uh, East Coast. This is going to be the big one. This is where they're all going to be there. Now, for months, I've been you know, answering the question, will I be in attendance uh, at the Staples Center to see... Um, the go-home show for WrestleMania 31. Now, the answer easily is no. And honestly, when people started asking me before the tickets even went on sale, the answer was always going to be no. I have honestly not seen in years a go-home show to WrestleMania that I thought would be worth the money to travel um, to, to go to it. Now, it would be cool if, um, you know, the go-home show was live here in Sacramento, uh, like it was, uh, before, you know, SummerSlam 2010, and I wouldn't have to go anywhere. Of course I would be there. Um, it's, it's always fun to go, but honestly, when you think about the go-home shows to the Royal Rumble or to the Survivor Series, you always see the main event before Monday Night Raw fades to black is chaos ensues on Monday Night Raw with the ring filling up with, you know, close to 30 guys all brawling and all fighting it out. And, uh, you know, that is the reason why you go and you order the pay-per-view on Sunday to see, you know, that this much chaos happened on Monday Night Raw. I gotta see what goes down at the pay-per-view. Now, you know, I can go back in the past and think of, you know, Rock versus Cena, um, you know, the go-home Raw between those two guys. They both got in the ring. They both had it in their eyes that it looked like they were going to do it and we were going to get a little bit of the pay-per-view, a little bit of a sample uh, for free. And instead, cooler, hails, uh, cooler heads per prevailed and they just looked at each other. And I remember the, the, the show fading black and I was like, that's it? That's it. They're not even going to touch for two years. These guys have been talking smack back and forth, um, you know, talking about who the better guy is. And here they are, both in the same ring at the same time, staring each other down. And neither of them wants to throw bows. Neither of them wants uh, to, uh, you know, do, you know, start messing around. And, and uh, it probably when it comes down to it, neither of them wanted to give it away for free. And uh, you can think about the go home shows. Uh, you know, for Cena versus Batista and other main events along the way, we really don't get to see, um, you know, any, you know, physicality. Whole lot of promos, whole lot of on Sunday, I'm going to see you. And, and when it comes down to it, I just don't think that would be worth it to go travel. Uh, you know, buy the $100 flight, you know, $200 round trip, uh, $50 for a cab to get from the LAX uh, to the Staples Center. Um, when it comes down to it, um, I don't think the tag team match has officially been announced, even though it's up on WWE.com and it's posted on the WWE Network as well. Um, that might be the only thing that it's, is, is announced. Besides for the fact of uh, uh, Bill Simmons and Snoop Dogg being in attendance, I don't really see anything else going down. Um, Sting being in attendance, uh, Brock Lesnar. Um, being there, um, you know, as one of his final appearances and, of course, the final show before Monday Night Raw. Anything could happen is what you think of when Brock Lesnar comes out. So, um, will it be a good show? I hope. Uh, but guaranteedly, I, I'm not 100% sold on it. But we'll have to see what goes down. It's going to be a damn good one, and it's on tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we're going to be on the road to WrestleMania for the March 23rd edition of Monday Night Raw. Of course, coming to you live from Staples Center. The main event of WrestleMania 31 is Brock Lesnar, the champion, coming in against Roman Reigns. There's so many ongoing storylines about this match. Um, basically, Brock Lesnar and Monday Night is looked at as D-Day. Uh, as being said for Vince McMahon and the team trying to sign Brock Lesnar to bring him back, uh, he hasn't even left yet, but try and keep 
Brock Lesnar from leaving the WWE Universe. There's rumors of uh, contracts being negotiated and talked behind closed doors of Brock Lesnar to go back to UFC or maybe even head over and try a new path in the MMA group Bellator. Whoever's going to pay the most money for the services of Brock Lesnar is going to get them. Uh, people are sometimes thinking that Brock Lesnar might be playing Vince McMahon, trying to, to bring in more money. You can think of Brock Lesnar shortly after after um, having a match and having a, you know his debut uh, back into WWE uh, in 2012, he showed up at a UFC show in the front row. It was said that Brock Lesnar tried to negotiate a return uh, to UFC with Dana White, but Dana White shooed Brock Lesnar away, basically saying that he would talk to Brock once his WWE days were done, but he sort of knew the game that Brock Lesnar was playing and didn't want to be any part of it. When Brock wanted to fight for real, come to him, and there would be a deal on the table, and they'd be able to negotiate it. But there's no way Dana White was looking for a part-time wrestler, part UFC time fighter, uh, and try to work around Vince McMahon's schedule. Now, here we are, uh, years later, and uh, it looks like Brock really wants to make that jump, or maybe he just really wants to see how much money Vince will be putting on the table. Brock Lesnar in the last three years, honestly, in my opinion, might have lived up to what his contract was. I think, you know, before WrestleMania 30, I was very vocal of thinking, you know, what did Brock really do to bring fans to the table? Yes, when he, you know, came at, back and made his return at uh, the night after WrestleMania 28 at Monday Night Raw there in Miami, it did spark a ton of interest. I, I bet there were some UFC viewers who did, you know, buy in and you know, purchase to watch Extreme Rules to see Brock Lesnar going up against John Cena. Brock Lesnar is a guy that always has a you know a big build up behind him of anything can happen because of how big this guy is, how bad he is. Uh, we've seen him in um, you know the WWF, WWE uh, before his uh, his. You know his leave, his leave of absence. I guess you can say in 2003, he came in as a rookie. He won uh, the WWF Championship from The Rock. Uh, not only that, he went to his first WrestleMania, WrestleMania 19, main evented after winning the Royal Rumble and beat Kurt Angle, one of the best wrestlers in the world, for the World Heavyweight Championship in the main event that night. So you can tell that, that Brock is, is a great professional wrestler with a great amateur wrestling uh, background. You know from going to the University of Minnesota, and as well as that, he went into the cage in UFC. Uh, he had his ups and downs along his way, but while he was there, he was the biggest name and the biggest face of UFC. I always talk about the fact that Brock Lesnar did, um, you know, was the poster boy uh, for one of the first UFC games. Uh, he was the the world heavyweight uh, heavyweight champion at that time. Uh, of UFC, so you know it was a big deal uh, that he was there, and it was a big deal that he left, even though he admitted that he thought he was past his prime. You can think of the uh, you know Brock Lesnar versus Overeem fight where Overeem got the win. It seemed that Brock Lesnar was running away uh, from Overeem as he was hitting him. Of course, he lost in the first round of that fight, and he, he did deserve to. You think about the diverticulitis that uh, Brock had gone through. Was his body really ready for the fight, or did he just really need the payday uh, because his new he, he knew his days in, in uh, UFC were done. Now here we are, you know, Brock showing up, uh, you know, WrestleMania uh, 31 as well as the Monday Night Raw the night after is going to be Brock Lesnar's last days in the company and it looks like he's going to be handing the torch over to the new flag bearer of the company and that being uh, Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns coming out of the shield. Uh, he won the Royal Rumble this year with a little bit of help from the, his, uh, you know, blood relative The Rock. And uh, on Monday, we're going to see these guys face-to-face. -face. Honestly, in my mind, uh, they've kept Brock and Roman far away as they can. The night after the Royal Rumble, which of course was the snowed-in Monday Night Raw, uh, which was probably one of the best things that could happen for Roman Reigns and the WWE, seeing how much you know bad publicity uh, that that Philadelphia crowd gave to Roman Reigns when he won uh, the Royal Rumble and even with uh, you know the Rock putting his stamp of approval on him the fans still booing for the second year in a row uh, not wanting to go along with who you know Vince McMahon and the people and the powers that be picked as the Royal Rumble winner to main event WrestleMania 31 um, did the people just boo because it wasn't Daniel Bryan did they boo because they were on uh, television and they wanted to see if they could uh, you know get this sort of uh, 
uh, appeal and appearance uh, that happened the year before when Batista made his return in Pittsburgh and uh, the Pittsburgh crowd were walking out on him. The pictures you can see of him in the corner pointing up at the WrestleMania sign. You can already tell that the people that were in the front row had already left. And those are the people that paid the most money to be inside of that building that night. They didn't want any part of the uh, Batista um, you know, award ceremony of him, you know, being crowned champion of the Royal Rumble that year and going on and to, to WrestleMania 30 and wrestling in the main event. They were already halfway to their car so they can get out of there before the traffic started to really back up. When I think about Roman Reigns, um, the, you know, the, the really the, the storyline booking of this guy, they really make this guy like look like one of the biggest chickens that's ever walked the face of the earth. Brock Lesnar and, and Roman Reigns, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman week after week. Um, you know, we've, we've seen, you know, Brock talking crap about how he can beat Roman and Roman just kept a level head and he's, you know, saving it for WrestleMania. Um, you know, Brock has, you know, been basically running him down as well as Paul basically saying that, you know, Roman is a, is a great wrestling talent. He seems like he's got a lot of momentum behind him, but when it comes to WrestleMania 31, it's going to be like running into a freight train. There's no way that Roman can beat Brock. There's nobody in this world that can beat Brock. And we've seen Brock and, and Heyman just run down Roman Reigns. While Roman's been in the building because he's had matches and he's had appearances on the show after um, these Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman promos, as in he hasn't even came out to confront him. So on Monday... We're going to finally see these guys go head-to-head, -head, and I need to see fireworks from this. I know that these guys more than likely won't touch, but I need something to prove that Roman Reigns isn't... Uh, we, we know they're going to fight. He's not going to back down, but something that shows me that Roman really is going to be bringing a fight to WrestleMania 31, because if as of right now, you know, when a guy is running you down inside of the ring and you're in the locker room, you get your butt out there and you confront him. That's what we've seen from everybody else. But for some reason, we've had this level-headed booking of uh, Roman Reigns, which uh, I don't know if it's because, you know, Brock Lesnar is a guy that has appeal, even though he's the main heel of the company and he is the champion. Uh, he is cheered loudly every time he makes an appearance on Monday Night Raw, every time he does beat somebody up, um, him and Heyman. Uh, have seem to have the WWE Universe in their hand, and maybe they don't want Roman Reigns to be booed um, again, even though that they know the perception for Roman Reigns is that uh, you know he's not really the most over guy in the company because people feel like he's being force-fed uh, the championship, and they don't really believe that he is the guy that should be there. So Monday's going to be a good one. Hopefully we see fireworks. More than likely, we see a whole lot of talking. Hey, what up, everybody? Uh, this is Steve Breach coming to you on the March 23rd preview edition of Monday Night Raw. We're counting down until WrestleMania 31. It's coming right up around the corner. It's just a few days before my tires are going to hit the ground and we're pulling off. Uh, but uh, you got to think about how long this Bray Wyatt versus Undertaker feud has been going on. Uh, Bray has been calling out Undertaker for well over two months, and except for the the one time lightning shot out of the ceiling and the words uh, when the man comes around came onto the uh, Titan Tron, as well as the words uh, coming uh, from Undertaker uh, it sounded much like 1990 Taker. Uh, saying that he was going to be there. You got to tip your hat to Bray Wyatt. How long he, this this has been going with one-sided promos, basically with him calling out Undertaker, with him bringing out the urns. And, uh, you know, he said a million things, and nearly none of them have really meant anything in the long run. If you think back to that fast lane, uh, when he came out in the coffin and he had the uh, the goblins and the ghouls, all the guys coming out in the trench coats and the robes uh, with the trenches, uh, torches covered in fire, uh, thinking that Undertaker actually was coming out to answer this challenge. It was really cool. But, uh, you know, this is the go-home edition of Monday Night Raw. It's going to be coming to you live from the Staples Center in L.A. And uh, I don't know. There's been those rumors out there floating around basically saying that Undertaker wasn't going to be a part of any of the Monday Night Raws or SmackDowns, main events, superstars, tapings, or anything else. They were going to be keeping him off of television uh, because they wanted to have the suspense. They wanted to really have um, the... You know, when WrestleMania 31 came, when you saw Taker, that was the, your mark-out moment because you finally got to see this guy. Now, you know, we haven't seen Taker in, in over a year since losing at WrestleMania 30 when he lost the streak to Brock Lesnar. If you go back in time and you think about WrestleMania 27 when Triple H beat um, Undertaker and uh, pretty much to the point of no return, if he would have grabbed uh, that uh, sledgehammer, 
in the no holds barred match and it was able to actually get a good grip on it and be able to hit taker the streak would have been dead there at wrestlemania 27 right there in atlanta and that would have been the memorable moment that people would remember but instead it was undertaker who went back to his cabin and started to clip his hair off uh because the only thing he could think of was that um at WrestleMania 28, he needed his revenge. Even though he won the match, he didn't win it in his Undertaker fashion. He wanted to prove what the streak meant to him, and he wanted to prove that at WrestleMania, he was the better wrestler at WrestleMania 27. It wasn't just luck that got him through to make a Triple H... Um, uh, tap out. That's why they brought out the Hell in the Cell. That's why he had the Mohawk. That was the 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 thing behind it. Now he loses last year at WrestleMania um, to to Brock Lesnar because of the concussion, because of the F fives. Now he's coming back to fight a lesser opponent, in, and that is Bray Wyatt. You know, what has Taker been doing to prove to everyone that this streak really meant something? We need to see Taker on Monday Night Raw tomorrow. We need to see him because we need to know what WrestleMania means to him. He's not coming in with the 21-0 streak anymore. He's just Undertaker. He's just a guy. He's just a WWE legend. Uh, there is no, you know big meaning um, you know, behind this match other than let's just put Taker out there one more time against Bray. We've been listening to these promos from Bray for a long time. Uh, it almost seems like Bray's not even really saying anything. He's just running his mouth. Uh, and it does sound good, uh, but I, I just really haven't had anything that really hits me, that sticks with me, that, that makes this match mean anything. Uh, Taker coming out and actually having a confrontation with Bray Wyatt remind me you know, that this is actually a match that really does matter for something when it comes to WrestleMania 31. As of right now, this just sort of reminds me of like SummerSlam 2007, which ended up being the night of returns with Triple H and Rey Mysterio coming back from injury. Uh, neither one of these guys were seen on SmackDown or Raw at the time. Uh, you had an order, you had to order the pay-per-view in order to see Triple H go at it with the uh, King Booker, and you had to see Rey Mysterio uh, fight against Chavo Guerrero in both of their returns. So, uh, I think that was the night that uh, Triple H just came out and flat out buried King Booker, and that was the night when uh, Rey Mysterio came out dressed as a Silver Surfer, making his return. Um, you know, in the grand scheme of schemes, in the grand scheme of things, they made SummerSlam a memorable event that year. But the matches really don't really go down in the history of either one of those guys. Uh, they, they just were returns to the hype up of WWE at the time, you know, in the summer with SummerSlam, and pushed them into the next pay per view, knowing that these guys were back. So, Taker. I don't know. I hope it's the last go-round, and I hope we get to see him on Monday Night Raw tomorrow. I know, I know, I went on for months and months of talking about the Randy Orton return, but this is the last Monday Night Raw. This is the go-home to WrestleMania, and we still have yet to see Sheamus come back to WWE. I believe that Sheamus is going to be a part of WrestleMania 31. I do think that Sheamus will more than likely be added to either one of two matches. There's some people out there that think that he will be the eighth man named the Intercontinental uh, Championship Ladder Match. Uh, she uh, Sheamus is a guy that's never uh, really messed around in the mid-card. He was the United States Champion for a little bit uh, earlier this year, but he dropped the championship. Uh, to Rusev before the Survivor Series, uh, and that is when he went on his hiatus. He, he did have some sort of a surgery. Uh, he did tweet about that, uh, where he tweeted a picture as he was going into the surgery, but it never really came out what he got fixed. But it has been known that Sheamus has been ready uh, to return for quite a while. Sheamus is a guy that... Uh, has always been in the plans for WWE to put him somewhere near the top of the card, but never really stuck anywhere. You can remember earlier in the year when Batista was leaving WWE, it was a rumor that Sheamus would be turning heel and joining the Evolution Group, where he would start dressing up in suits, uh, you know, and be all about the money uh, by joining the Authority. And it ended up being that Seth Rollins ended up getting that spot, and uh, Sheamus sort of just kept on doing what he was doing. And Sheamus is a guy, honestly, in my mind that. Uh, it's, it's always a guy with the plan, but the plan is never really put out there. Even when he went after his first uh, World Heavyweight Championship, you know, when he was on that run, getting into uh, winning the Royal Rumble and going to WrestleMania 28 and wrestling uh, against Daniel Bryan, uh, he just was a guy that never really had a set feud. He just was the guy that showed up and had matches. Uh, most of the time, he didn't have matches that were named to be on a pay-per-view. They would just say, hey, Swagger, get out there. Go five minutes. Take the big boot, and it's over. Um, but uh, this year, 
I really think that where they're going to put Sheamus is they're going to be putting him into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. This is the second one. Even last year at WrestleMania 30, I had him as my favorite uh, to win it. I don't know where he ended up placing. I think that he just sort of got dropped out uh, somewhere near the end before uh, Cesaro threw Big Show over the top and Cesaro got the spot. So many people think that the uh, Memorial Battle Royal uh, really is something. I think it is a moment. You get a plaque. You get your picture taken. You know, for a year, they, they keep showing everything that it's a big deal, that you won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, you know, there were rumors a few years ago that Sheamus was the guy to take that top spot. Uh, they were trying to push him as the uh, John Cena of the company. They just needed to find a way to, to get where people would all care about this guy and, and make him the man. I think they've tried many times. I think that, you know, Sheamus is bigger than a mid-carter. Uh, I don't think that he is a, a true main eventer that can main event a real pay-per-view. I think that if you put him in a, a good quality number two feud, um, he could be a, a you know a good B plus player uh, for the WWE, but I don't know if. if Sheamus doesn't return on this, uh, you know, countdown to WrestleMania show. Um, I think he is questionable to even ha be a part of the WrestleMania 31 show. It just is a question mark why they've been showing these promos for so long. Is it that they're holding Sheamus off until um, the the Raw after WrestleMania, where they can come in and they can actually have a program for him? I remember last year thinking about the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, thinking that we might get a Chris Jericho or a Rob Van Dam return. Jericho, of course, this guy always looking to take a, a big spotlight return. Rob Van Dam was heavily rumored to be coming back into the company around this time. And I thought that, that you know they would have a whole bunch of guys come out and then all of a sudden they'd be announcing uh, the competitors and then you'd hear the Rob Van Dam music or the lights would all shut off and the Jericho jacket would you know you know brighten up the whole stadium and then you know uh, Jericho would come moseying down saying there's no no way you can have Wrestlemania without him and he gets to have a big Wrestlemania moment uh, but instead just all the guys just walked down got in the ring they ring the bell and they all started fighting and that was just about it so I don't know if there's gonna be a big moment when Sheamus's music hits and he comes down beating his chest gets in there and just starts dumping guys over and gets that diesel like moment or Mabel like moment Kane moment in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, but as of right now, he is my odds-on favorite, and he is the guy that I think is pulling out, and hopefully he'll be a part of Monday Night Raw to, to announce uh, that he is going in to the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. As we're counting down uh, to the uh, go-home show for Monday Night Raw for WrestleMania 31, uh, you got to think about what you know, the main event of uh, WrestleMania 31 is. And uh, to some people, it's going to be Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar because that is the main event. But to me, honestly, Triple H versus Sting seems to be the match that has the most appeal. I know that they're really playing this off like it's WCW versus WWE live here in 2014. I know that, that it would have been perfect if they would have been doing this a few years ago when they did uh, the WCW um Maybe even it was it wasn't even just WCW. It was like the Monday Night War, uh, you know, series uh, with the WWE video game. It would have gone along uh, pretty well. But uh, to me, honestly, the Sting versus Triple H feud really got a real big kick in the pants uh, last week with the end of Monday Night Raw with Sting coming out to save Randy Orton. Um, if you think back to the week before, I don't know what they were thinking. I know that people have told me that that was Sting doing that promo, and there's some people who will defend it saying it was Dolph Ziggler. I have heard it back on YouTube, and people have tweaked with the audio, and it does sound exactly like Dolph Ziggler, but you know the company response is that it was Sting. It was his voice inside of the promo, but I just didn't want to believe it, and I spent all week sort of shaking my head, thinking how stupid that was. Um, why not spend the money to fly Sting in, do the Monday Night Raw appearance? This is WrestleMania. I can understand if you were trying to save some money and, you know, they were doing some sort of a match at, you know, payback or something like that with Sting and you didn't want to waste it because it wasn't going to be uh, one of the biggest, you know, things in the history. But this is WrestleMania. This is Sting's first appearance. You can't be pulling stuff like that. And uh, I think a lot of people felt like that was that was pretty dumb. 
and uh, I don't know if they mess with the audio or not, like I said, but, you know, w what I know is when you turn on the WWE Network after Monday Night Raw ended last week uh, for that exclusive segment uh, when basically Sting and Randy Orton had the segment inside of the ring, I was pumped. I am not a big Randy Orton fan. I am not a Sting fan. That's all that was in the ring that night. They beat off the whole authority uh, right there in, in front of the ring, and everybody was watching. Um, uh, they, they were able to, to save Randy Orton when they was coming down to be five or six on one uh, in the main event when it was just supposed to be a one-on-one -on -one Randy Orton versus uh, uh, a Seth Rollins match. The authority, you know, they were trying to work Orton to have a, a, a false sense of security uh, that it was going to be an even one-on-one -on -one match that Orton had broken down the authority only to be, you know, that whelp. Here, here they come. I'm about to get my ass kicked moment. And, uh, you know, as they were fighting them off, Randy was you know, throwing out RKOs. Everybody was going down. Sting was all fired up. Randy sort of said, hey, hey I'm a guy that sort of plays, uh, plays by my own. I, I don't need help. Uh, but that, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, that, uh, uh, I thought that would be pretty cool if, uh, you know, we were all together. But, um, you know, with Sting, uh, I, I'm not sure what they're doing. I've heard rumors uh, that, um, you know, he flew to uh, WWE uh, headquarters up there in Stanford, Connecticut. I heard that he was basically going to be filming uh, some things that they would use sort of like in promos that leads up to WrestleMania 31 that they would play on SmackDown, that they would play on Raw. Uh, but then I do have on, uh, on good authority that Sting is in L.A., uh, for the, uh, the the show tomorrow, that he will be a part of it. Uh, I, I the only thing I can guess is when I think about WWE booking, when I think about WWE, um, and, and the way they do things is that you know if people you know get the one ups on the authority one week, they don't get the one ups on it the next week. Especially when you think about Sting uh, versus Triple H at WrestleMania 31, you've got to be thinking that you know Triple H is doing the honors. Uh, that Sting will be going over, you know, this it, it, much like when I think about the Undertaker match. Would Undertaker really come back to lose again after he lost last year? You know, if, to lose two in a row, what does that really mean? Sting is a guy that's never wrestled for WWE. Uh, there are rumors that he would come in, in during the 90s. There was rumors that he would come in in the late 90s when when WCW closed. You know, there was always that question if Sting would show show up. It seemed like every year there was the, the question, you know, would Sting re-sign with TNA or would Sting go and would he work, um, you know, for, for WWE? You know, there, there was the rumors for Undertaker versus Sting at WrestleMania 27, 28, uh, 30, and now 31. He's finally showing up. Uh, so you got to think Sting's got to be winning that match. But, uh, you know, does, does Sting just show up and be onslaughted by the authority as well? Um, you know, you really can't have Seth Rollins. Well, maybe Seth Rollins does need to get some revenge. But he has his own feud going on with Randy Orton. But, you know, when Sting has showed up, He's got rain. He's gotten uh, Seth Rollins beat twice. Once at the Survivor Series when he had Dolph Ziggler pin him after the uh, Scorpion Death Drop, and as well uh, when Sting just showed up and and got Big Show and Kane all fired up and they ran out of the ring. It made Seth Rollins get rolled up by John Cena, and that's what it was able to bring Rowan Ryback and uh, Ziggler from being fired. They able to get them. Uh, back in time for the Royal Rumble, even though Rowan wasn't in it, he was in it, but, you know, it is what it is, but, um, you know, is Sting coming back? I, I don't think that on Monday Night Raw, he's going to be getting the uh, the hero's welcome. I think that more than likely, if anybody's going to be showing any physicality showing up uh, before WrestleMania, it will be the authority beating up Sting, sort of leaving him laying, making you think like, oh, wow, Sting, you know, he's got the better of the authority the last three, four times this guy showed up, or and he's been inside Triple H's head. This is the time Triple H is able to get his hands on him. Uh, maybe Kane, maybe J&J &J Security, uh, maybe um, Big Show, they rough this guy up in the corner, a little throwing some bows on this guy, beating him up, leaving him laying. Um, and uh, getting inside his head. But we'll have to see. It, uh, tomorrow's the big show. And uh, we're all going to be fired up. The road to WrestleMania. It, it basically hits uh, the, the end tomorrow. I mean, nobody's really going to be caring about SmackDown. If you're going to WrestleMania, you got no time in order to watch it on Thursday. Uh, but you'll be going to uh, to Access, the NXT show, Ring of Honor, uh, and all that other mess. So you're going to be uh, seeing a lot of wrestling going on. So basically, if they don't have anything figured out by tomorrow, it's all said and over, all, all done with. Go home show, Monday Night Raw, on the road to WrestleMania 31 tomorrow. It's going to be great. Peace out.